Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Metro Graphics with Jean-Marie Brunet, who's going to talk today about some of the changes that are coming in emulation and how that's going to connect to power. So Jean-Marie, we've heard a lot about power over the, oh, for quite a while. It's, there's nothing new here, but what is new is that we're starting to deal with, instead of just uh, leakage, uh, static leakage, we're starting to deal with dynamic power as we get into the FinFETs. How much of a problem is this and how do we solve it? Uh, FinFET has been a, a transistor um, talked a lot about uh, to help with Moore's law and continuity in scaling. Uh, FinFET is a very good transistor for leakage. Static leakage control is, is, is actually extremely, extremely good. Uh, for dynamic, it's a little bit uh, not as good as we were, uh, we were hoping. So looking at the trends over uh, several, uh, several years, we see that dynamic uh, power consumption remains the number one challenge for all of our customers. Um, so what we have seen on the, on the marketplace um, is, is a, a trend. Um, and this, this trend or that shift is coming from a, a usage shift of a lot of the computer um, devices or, or personal devices uh, to a different uh, uh, usage. Um, and um, so if you look at a cell phone versus a tab or uh, other uh, devices like this, uh, the usage is a little bit different depending on who, you, who you're talking to within your, within your family or, uh, or within the food chain. Uh, certain use that for games, others use that for, for email, others use that for applications such as fa Facebook and so on. But the usage is a little bit different. Uh, however, the chips underneath um, that uh, hardware structure are very similar. So you need to be able to verify that, uh, that chip behavior and power consumption is, is under control throughout that large spectrum of uh, different usage and utilization. Why don't you draw this out for us? So okay. let me uh, try to uh, go through a pictorial representation of what we are talking about. Um, so think about a situation where you, um, due to that usage shift that uh, we were talking about, you, you have the need to boot an operating system and run a live application. To do this, we're talking about hundreds, more than hundreds of millions of cycle. So the x-axis you'll have cycles of, of uh, simulation or emulation. And on the y-axis you're talking about uh, switching, switching activity. Um, and now we're talking about those many, uh, you know, huge amount of cycles. You look at an activity probably what is happening. So probably within the chip, you know, when you boot the OS you have a real good spike of peak currents, then start to run some application and you, you have a very good description of real live application on what is going on within the chip. So what we are dumping here and looking at is every net within your design through hundreds of mini of cycles where you put an operating system, Linux or Android, and you run you run an application. This is real, real live application. This is how the design is going to be actually effectively be used. Now you see that you have those switching activities. So obviously when you have huge spike of switching activity, this is where power is important because this is you know, a lot of nets are, are, are toggling and that's consuming dynamic power. So you want to pay attention to, you know, pretty much a, a kind of a thresholding approach saying anything higher than that value, I know I got I to gotta look at those areas. So they are red. You know, this is, this is problematic. I need to know what's happening. So this is, this is what we are actually able to do. You, you uh, load through the um, Veloce platform your entire design, put an operating system, and, and run some live application. And you have a very accurate uh, and uh, good representation of where activities are taking place. Now, you know that on those area, uh, if you link uh, to a power analysis tool, you can compute a power number, and that power number will be a real good representation of what the chip will be consuming when you actually utilize it. And this varies greatly depending upon whether you're running a graphics application or a data application, for example, that might just be work word processing, right? But that is correct. But the uh, what is consistent among those different type of applications is at some point you're going to boot an OS. So that, that stage will, depending on the OS you're going to boot, but you'll have that stage of you know what is happening within the software and the firmware to actually have the uh, OS being ready. And after that you invoke your application, it can be different behavior. But that sequence here at the beginning is extremely important to capture. The problem with cu current methodology is a functional test bench usually captured you know a small a small portion of what is happening what is happening so maybe your functional test bench you know is giving you 
Uh, in terms of switching activity on the this, this is very small because it's usually based on simulation, so you don't have hundreds of millions of cycles. But what you have here is you have a representation that is actually completely different than what reality is, is going to be. And that's where the problem comes from. So if we think at, at within that window, this is what the uh, functional test bench is going to tell us, well, we think that the maximum power of switching activity is here, where in reality it's absolutely not there. So you have a false power peak information, and that's, that's very dangerous because you're forecasting a value of power consumption that is not the real one. Most designers today run off of either peak power or average power. Mm -hmm. This basically combines the two of them, right? That is correct. So you have a good sense of the It's actually real-life uh, uh, consumption of, of power. So you have the average power throughout the cycle, and you have the peak where this is the most important value to capture because if your, your package, your board, your design does not understand you're going to have to deal with that dynamic power peak, then you'll have uh, uh, very unpleasant surprises uh, on the system. Most design teams don't work with both of those at the same time, though. They, they've never been structured that way. How does that ha affect the structure of the design team, how they approach a problem, and also where that problem gets solved in the design flow? Very interesting question. Um, most of the time within uh, our, our customer uh, design engineering team, as you said, they are separate teams. They, they don't usually talk to each other, or if they interact with each other, they interact with a spec or a specification of a value. Here, because uh, um, a couple of them were burned, uh, they had to. They were actually forced to talk to each other. Now they are able to talk to each other within the platform, which is the emulation platform, where the, the design is, is, is run like live system application. So now you can call the power team, you can call the verification team, you can call the software team, you can call the test team. Multiple teams can be called to look at what is really happening and say, okay, now I can verify my chip within different constraints. Uh, for, for what we are talking about here, this is really to look at from a power perspective what's happening. If you're a designer, where do you make the, these changes? Is it at the before RTL? Is it during RTL? Where do you see the, the changes actually going? Very interesting um, question. Um, because most of the design community has looked at power uh, really late in the flow cycle. They are looking at uh, gate level. Um, power the same way that they're looking at uh, timing, pretty much. Uh, so you have a gate level, everything is already foreplanned, placed, synthesized, obviously you have a gate, you have interconnect delay, so it's extracted, um, and, and at that level you get a pretty accurate power number. Of course, not accurate within the context of what I just talked about, because it would be based on a, just a simple functional test bench, but you deal with a gate level. Any modification there is way too late and modifications are usually optimization, they're very small. Here, what we are talking about is changing the way on how you look at this. You look at this at the RTL level. Very early on, where the RTL and the software are being basically uh, designed, and you start to look at where uh, power consumption through the entire live application is being utilized, then now you can make modification and trade-off at the RTL level, and then it will, it will carry all the way to gate. So we're changing really in the food chain where that, that application is plugging. Now we're talking about RTL. Uh, we've, one of the terms that's come up over the past has been shift left. This is really a shift left of a lot of different things, right? Yeah. This is shift towards a, a, a very, very left because what you, um, same thing that you just said, you know, in terms of flow perspective, you know, if we look at system, RTL, gate, and one I used to be very familiar with, tip out with, uh, with Caliber. I mean, power used to reside here. And you have a value and you tip out. Now we're talking about moving it here and way all the way to here. So this is what we're talking about with shift left. Physically, it's going towards the left. So, so in the past, um, whenever you did this kind of uh, analysis, it was pretty much done for whatever you're specifically running. But in an SOC, sometimes you're running more than one thing. Does it take that additive effect into account? That's correct. Because really here, you, you, you can run different live applications as long as your OS is, is actually booted. Um, multiple applications can be run. So multiple and different usage of that SOC and combination of the logic within the SOC can be utilized. So this is, this is really the complete real uh, uh, representation on how the design will be utilized on the board. That's ultimately what you want. This is the dream. You really want to know what's happening live. 
rather than trying to create a test bench that looks only from a functional perspective, uh, corner cases to verify the logic. Those corner cases may be really good from a logical perspective, but not, they might not be a real representation of how the design will be utilized. Does this also take into account things like how much margin has been built in and the effectiveness of that margining? Uh, because in the past, if you built in margin, it would safeguard your design, but uh, as you start getting down to 14, 16 nanometers, 10 nanometers, sometimes now that eats up power, it uh, uh, causes other effects that you didn't plan on. Does that show up here as well? So the margin effect is not really directly, uh, you know, does not directly correlate to this. Uh, however, it is part of the fact that through this entire live application, um, from, from a power perspective, you, you need to see if you if, if the design is reactive within the margin and the gap bending that you were you were putting into your design, um, but the, the margins and so on is really is really more related to specification from a timing perspective, um, a little bit less from a power perspective. For, from power is, is I will say the methodology for power as we have seen with UPF, so we have seen with power analysis tool is changing towards this is a much bigger concern. The move to feed fat. Uh, actually highlighted that dynamic power had to be looked at much early on, so she left again uh, towards architectural decisions. So in a way, we're, we are trying to remove a lot uh, uh, that margin and, and, and gain as much as possible early on a sense of where real uh, power for that, for that matter here, consumption is taking place uh, so that we remove that margin. Now, you don't have margin. This is really what's happening. One other piece that comes into play here is uh, third-party IP, which has become uh, much more of a uh, uh, regular feature inside of complex SOCs because nobody has time to develop it all. Does that show up here as well if you say, okay, I want to use this IP versus this IP. Here's what the power consumption is going to be. Absolutely. You can even think of uh, one RTL going through that cycle of uh, boot up uh, can behave differently based on where the IP you plug in your RTL or not. Uh, I'm sure customer can use the activity plot to show that uh, a, a, a particular IP, although it has the same functionality than the other, the behavior might be different. Um, so it is, it is conceivable that it can help for IP selection, but that's not the number one use model. Jean-Marie Brunet, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for your time, Ed. It was very good to see you today.